up on a crap cracker. What the heck is this? A space engineer's video? It's been almost a year since I made a space engineer's video. But some people took special pains to request a planets tutorial, and I have to admit that the planets update made me curious. So I dusted the game off and had a look, and here's what I found. First things first, you're probably going to need to turn down some settings. I had no problem playing Space Engineers at maximum detail at 60 frames per second before planets. But now when there's a planet involved, I've got to turn pretty much everything down. The most important things to turn down are shadows, foliage, and grass density. So if you find yourself watching a slideshow when you try to play, turn down these graphic settings. Now then, planets by and large are really just extra huge asteroids with special rules about gravity, oxygen, and thrusters. The presence of real natural gravity makes your ships behave differently. Unlike artificial gravity, natural gravity does pull your entire ship down, so it requires a lot more thrust to move around in the gravity well of a planet, because your inertia dampeners are constantly going to be fighting the downward pull of the planet. You will need to take this into account in your ship designs, because it means a whole lot more thrusters pointing down than you are probably previously used to. And speaking of thrusters, natural gravity, or possibly atmosphere, I'm not entirely clear on this one, hampers the effectiveness of the old-school ionic thrusters we've been using for years. The closer you get to a planet, the less thrust they will generate. So there's a new kind of atmospheric thruster for you to put on ships that you plan to use down close to the surface. They look like big jet engines, and have to be mounted a little differently. Also, it should go without saying they don't work at all in vacuum. And one more deleterious effect of natural gravity, it shorts out gravity generators. This means the closer you get to the surface of the planet, the more worthless your gravity drive becomes. So you won't be able to glitch your way up off the surface and into space with a gravity drive. Alright, let's get down to brass tacks. There's three easy ways to experience planet-based content. The first two are to start new maps using the planet type starts. The most popular are Easy Start Earth and Star System. Let's talk about Star System first. The Star System map will put you in a prefab atmospheric lander falling toward an Earth-like planet. It's loaded up with all the components you need to start a basic base. But first thing is first, you've got to land. Make note of the lander's design. It starts pointing your face toward the ground, but that's actually sideways. The big heavy engines only point one way, and at first that way isn't pointing toward the ground, so as you fall into the atmosphere, pull back on the stick and orient yourself using the artificial horizon. That's a new thing that will tell you when your ship is right side up and level. As you descend, try to find a good landing spot, preferably somewhere low altitude where the atmosphere is thick so your jet engines will be most effective. And it'd also be nice to land near a lake so you have easy access to ice to make oxygen and hydrogen. You will need lots of both to get back into space, eventually. Another consideration is you could look for a desert. Word has it that black veins of uranium are easy to spot from the air in the desert. So my advice would be to look for a lake near a desert. Yeah, I know. How about a pony and some chocolate air while I'm wishing, right? Landing isn't as hard as you might think it is. Just make sure the bottom of your ship is pointed down and the inertia dampeners are on. Fly down toward where you want to land, but as you get close, remember that the inertia dampeners are nerfed in the most recent patch. They're no longer super strong so it will take you longer to slow down than it used to. Try to find a nice level patch of land and keep lowering yourself slowly over it until your landing gears indicate they're in locking range. Try to get all four like that if you can. Then turn off your inertia dampeners. Congratulations, you just landed on a planet. Now you just need to get your base set up and start mining the resources you'll need to make a ship to take you back into orbit. That might take a while, but that's part of the adventure, isn't it? Uranium is rare, so make sure you get as many solar panels as you can up and running ASAP to charge your batteries. There's parts for six or so in your lander's cargo bay. If you want to skip the part where you're scrabbling off the land to get started, Instead of Star System, choose Easy Start Earth as your new map. Easy Start Earth will start you on the surface with a sizable base already complete and a couple basic atmospheric ships already complete. There's one drawback though, your base is 5 kilometers from a pirate outpost, and very often the outpost will spawn drones to come attack your base. The drones usually go right for the solar panels, which is really bad, because here solar energy is your lifeblood, again with the uranium being rare when you start. You've got the parts to build more defenses, but the constant attacks will bleed you dry of ammo in time, so the best policy here is to be proactive and go on the offense. Fortunately, you start with a basic fighter. I don't much care for the design myself, but it will serve for now. So I recommend the first thing you do is get in the fighter and head toward the pirate outpost, angling to the right and trying not to get too close. Its turrets will open up on you at 800 meters, remember. However, the outpost is built up against a sharp peak, 
which gives it a giant blind spot on the rear. Circle around through the canyon behind the outpost and stay low to the ground while you approach. Rise up when you get close enough for the peak to obscure you from the base, and then peek over the top just enough to see the outpost's antenna. Use your missile launchers to take out the supports for the antenna. No antenna means no remote control, and no remote control means no drones. Your base is now safe from drones from this outpost. If you're feeling your oats, you can also try to take out the defensive turrets on the base as well. There's just one missile turret and one gatling turret, and they're on opposite sides of the base. So you should be able to do it in your fighter, given that you closed the distance via sneaking. Though you will probably take a lot of damage in the brawl. When you're done neutralizing the pirate outpost, head back to your base and land on the platform with the open connector. Connect back up to the connector so that the base's solar panels can recharge your fighter's batteries. You're going to do a whole lot with batteries and solar panels down here, so get used to the idea. The third option to mess around with planets is my personal preference, adding a planet to a saved game you already have. Simply change the game temporarily to creative mode and then load it up. Hit Shift F10, then select you want to generate a planet of the Earth-like variety, And boom, there's a planet in your game. Now you can just fly there and land on it, right? Well, yeah, but hold on a minute there, Spanky. Chances are your existing fleet is only geared for deep space travel. You'll need atmospheric engines to actually land. And if your ships are big armored bruisers, you'll need a lot of atmospheric engines. For example, my Paddy Wagon Mark II only started off weighing 2,400 tons, that's 2.4 million kilograms, but by the time I added enough atmospheric engines to not smack into the surface like a hefty bag full of vegetable soup thrown off a skyscraper, it weighed 3,200 tons. My experimentation basically says on a large ship you're going to need a large atmospheric thruster for every 200 tons of weight including the weight of the new thrusters. If you're cutting it close, try approaching the planet while moving forward as fast as possible. Aim at the horizon and keep thrusting forward as you fall. The maximum speed the game allows is 104 or so meters per second total, and so the faster you're moving forward, the slower you're falling down. This is harder than it sounds, however, because these planets have a dead zone between 5 kilometers and 10 kilometers in altitude, where there's not enough atmosphere for your Atmo thrusters, but there's still too much gravity for your ionic thrusters. So, unless you also took the time to outfit with hydrogen thrusters and brought along the requisite hydrogen fuel, you're pretty much just going to fall like a brick for 5,000 meters. Hope you brought enough Atmo thrusters to slow you down before you auger in. So there you have it, everything you need to know about planets to get started. There's also a Mars-like planet which has no oxygen in its atmosphere, and an alien-type planet with a poisonous atmosphere and horrible spider things that try to kill you. But it's probably best to get your feet wet with an Earth-like planet. Once you have that down, the added challenges of the other planet types should be fun rather than frustrating. See you guys next time, if and when they ever get around to fixing multiplayer servers.